Hey you guys, this is Josh Vision and I'm here to bring to you my Samurai Jack Season 5 Episode 2 review. So we begin this episode with Aku waking up and Aku is kind of annoyed at this point. He's kind of cranky. He meets with, I believe, mud, some mud people. Mud people, they made him some type of token gift, some type of gift, you know, being uh, thankful for the fact that Aku has spared them, you know, from him, from his, from his wrath, you know, and Aku can't help but notice the fact that the mud people, they're dripping mud over his floor, which he mentioned that he just cleaned, so he told them to pretty much leave. Before Aku can make it back to his little space, his little room, his scientists remind Aku that they finished building this mega beetle bot, and Aku's like, Okay, why are you tell me this? Why did you even do this in the first place? And pretty much they were like, they had to remind him, well, we did this because all the rest of the robots, all the, all the other things that you've been trying to create have failed against Samurai Jack. You know, the guy you've been trying to kill for the past 50 years. And I was like, oh, that guy. Well, I don't care about him anymore. That's the old Aku. The new Aku... It's whatever. You guys do what you guys want. I'm A-OK. -okay. Then he slithers down back into his room, and then he has this funny interaction with himself. You know, <clears throat> the other half of himself is kind of like a therapist, while the other one is like the patient. And they're pretty much talking about what Aku's feeling. Aku is frustrated the fact that the samurai is alive after 50 years. He's angry at the fact that despite the 50 years that's happened, Samurai Jack has not aged one bit, which the other side of him says that's probably due to the time loop, the time travel that's preventing him from aging the normal way. Um, the other side of him was like, but even if I eradicate him, it's like I don't, I don't have the energy to do this. It's like I just wish someone could take him out for me and they both say and both sides pretty much come together and say if only if only right after this scene we have the wolf the lone wolf and we see him which is very similar he has the same body language as Jack and I like how in this episode they sort of symbolize the wolf that Jack is being similar you know like the lone wolf they're by themselves they're quiet but deadly and Despite the fact they're in different places, you know, in the roles that are presented before them, they both decide to take the left. And it's funny how that worked because when they decided to go to the left side of the path, they both, they encountered enemies that greatly outnumbered them. I believe the, the wolf had around three big-ass tigers just wanted a piece of that wolf meat. And with Jack, he had like six or seven of Haku's daughters like, ready to take the man who's been causing, quote-unquote, their father hell for the past 50 years. So, I'm going to start off with Jack. Jack, literally, after destroying the Beetle Bot quite easily, I might add, he's dealing with Haku's seven daughters, as I mentioned. And they're quick. They're on that Minato fourth Hokage level quickness. Just raw speed coming at Jack. Like, boom, 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 we can barely see them. And we have to remember, they've been training since birth. And you, in the way, like, I don't know, I'm gay, they're probably in their 20s at this point. You know, at least early 20s, probably late teens. So think about it, like, at least 18 and 23 years of intense training. And they're beating the crap out of Jack. Like, they're beating Jack so bad, they, I, I, they literally beat him out of his suit, his armor. Jack is trying to shoot, like, guns. A machine, my, uh, like, that didn't work. He had a machine gun. That sh didn't work. Dude tried to get his knife out. That didn't work. It got to the point that, Sam, that Samurai Jack had to run away and hide away. Um, in regards to the to the wolf, the wolf is getting being down, like, but he's still fighting. He's, you know, he's still buying some, he's still buying back, but the, it seems like the numbers are going to, it seems like at one point the, the numbers game was going to overtake him. So Samurai, we had this interesting scene with Jackie, which he's talking to, you know, his inner self. And his inner self is like, listen, I'm tired of this. 
I don't want to be stuck in this forsaken time. You know, let's just end this. There's no, like, the time loop, like, our way of getting home is destroyed. We ain't got the sword no more. And what if Aku finds out about this? And Jack is, you know, obviously, like, you know, Jack is saying, like, you know what? We don't need the sword. I've done fine without it. And they're just notes and bolts. Like every other challenge I've had, I've always found a way to overcome them. And they're just nuts and bolts. That's it. And he keeps on repeating that. And then Jack said to Koch is like, well, you know what? There's no honor in this anymore. Aren't you tired of this? Don't you want to be just let free? Our ancestors are waiting for us. And at this point, you're like saying to yourself, well, you know what? I'm not surprised this happened. Jack literally, in a sense, started to lose his mind. He's been gone for like, what? He's been gone for like 50 years since the beginning of the series till now. So we got to commend him for being able to keep his mind at least in control until this point. He went 50 years, y'all. 50 years. So <clears throat> at one point after this conversation, Jack notices a figure pretty much similar to the other episode. A figure that's in total samurai gear. It seems as though this figure has a, has the sword and a big type of like spear-like weapon from his hand. And in my opinion, I feel as though that's like a future, like a foreshadowing of what Jack's going to be when he eventually is able to return back to his past and face Haku for the final time. Anyways, he notices this temple like place and he tells his other self he's like listen i'm gonna get there i can get there his other self is like no there's no way they'll get you before you can make it and jack's like i'm gonna make it and we see him just desperately dash to that temple and as soon as he gets there those little seven demon daughters of Haku are right on his tail so it was just really interesting because like we had this firefly that was flickering on and off, like sort of like a lamp or a torch in a sense, because that place was so freaking dark. Um, at one point, Jack is able to sort of hide away from the seven daughters, but eventually they catch up to him, and Jack is dodging, you know, exchanging blows, you know, fisticuffs, blade work with the daughters to the point at which he's able to sort of slip away, and he hides in this, what I assume to be like a catacomb part of the temple you know with silver like silver graves or coffins in this big room and we see that there's a king who's dead obviously because he's like all bones with an axe in his hand the king's obviously deceased and there's fireflies above you know like it seemed like like tree roots like deep in the t like, like pretty much the top of the place that's keeping this room illuminated with light so the music was awesome. It really brought in the it brought home the fact that you don't know what's gonna happen to Jack. You got seven of these deadly assassins coming for Jack's life, and Jack's in one of the coffins, and one of the fireflies is there keeping the light in the you know, as a light in the coffin for Jack, but it's flickering, and, and the lights getting dimmer, and dimmer, and dimmer, and you see the fear in Jack's eyes. It was just like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? And Jack's able to literally lunge out of the of that stone coffin right in time, right before the daughters of Haku just crashed that thing with their weapons. At that point, Jack once again engages with them. Jack's holding, is doing, doing a little bit better than he did um, compared to their previous scuffle, but still too many for him to take on. So Jack is able to escape once again, and while he's running through this seems to be a maze of the temple, he finally has the opportunity to fight one of them one-on-one. -on -one. And despite the good effort that, that, that one of them put up, Jack easily dis, you know, dispatches her. He takes her out. But she dies pretty much, or at least with one good shot. She stabs Jack pretty much, I would say, yeah, he, she stabbed her with the side of his, of his stomach. But Jack cuts her throat. So it was crazy after, but before he cuts the throat, he headbutts her. That leads to it, and he eventually, when she, um, when she eventually falls to her death, the mask splits open, and Jack sees, for the first time, you know, who's behind it. He sees it's a girl, 
At first, like I said, before, he thought it was nothing. Both just thought he just thought it was a machine, like every other, like enemy Haku was sent towards this way. But this was actually a human being, and just the fact that Jack slashed the throat. I believe this is also Jack's first human kill. So, and just the look he gave, it was like it really creeped him out. It started to mess with his head, and we already know at this point Jack has already scrambled and freaking tortured for the fifty years of being, you know. In this forsaken timeline, the regrets he has of, about not being able to go back to his time to save them from the evil of Aku. And, the, you know, it's, it's, this was just really interesting how Jack's going to deal with the fact that he took the human life for the very first time. And he hears the other sisters coming, so Jack is able to get the weapon which he took after destroying, I believe his, his name was... Douch myth or something, or mouse stash or something, or mouse stash, something like that. I'll remember in the next review. But the the weapon, like the little dagger like sword, in which he's able to, like, when it hits, it, it like vibrates and just destroys everything. So Jack does that, and then he falls straight into the water with his blood just draining out of him. So thank you guys for watching this video. Like the video if you can, subscribe to my channel. Write some comments down below or your thoughts on this episode. And this is Josh Vision. Adios. Have a nice day.